Good evening, Free Enterprise fans, and welcome to another exciting match in Highway to the Three Miss Zone between JDP and Kedrel. Kedrel is one and one and needs a win here to make it into the Magma Group. JDP is looking to keep his perfect record intact and set up a 2 0 match versus Xenocat, who is also 2 0. I'm here with Bad Karma. Bad Karma, how are you doing tonight? I'm doing fantastic. I'm looking forward to a, a great race. Uh, I was able to catch JDP's race the other night, and he had a heck of a run on what seemed like it was going to be a really jetty seed turned into a rude seed. Uh, so I'm hoping for more of the same tonight. Well, we could very well have that looking over these objectives. In addition to Coco forging the Legend Sword, which is standard, we have the Vanilla Ribbon Room up on the moon. A very simple, complete the antlion nest and a queen at the town of monsters that really could go either way. Rando's gonna rando, just depends on who they're gonna put where. Uh, I'm really hoping for something rude at that ribbon spot that's just gonna make it more difficult to get through. <laughs> it's a very high hit point spot on the moon, the highest, I think, maybe, but if not the highest, very close. We've got, looks like the Quack Kid himself, Hallam, starting off, and that's not a bad thing at all. It might take him a while to learn warp, but at least you know you can get there eventually. Depending on if we could find a Tella early on, that could be your source of warp, or even a Rydia to pair with that Quack Kid. You know, she gets warp a little, little quicker, even if she gets quick a little bit later. Yeah, that's very true. Free characters are on, so not just the person walking in the door, but... There are several other character checks that don't require any work whatsoever. The two in Mesidia, the one in Watery Pass, and the one in Damsian Castle, but it looks like we are underway, so we'll get to see the first character that's joining Palom. What are you hoping they get to start off with? Oh, there's a Tella. Well, yeah, you I... called it. It's Tella. I'm here for that Tella life. I am a fan, but that quick magma is starting to push us towards Jet. Uh, and Magma Key early on it brings in a lot of interesting routing choices. Do you go dip the underground before start doing your overworld checks, get that key item out of the Bay March, get some gated shopping checked out, some gated uh, chests? Uh, that's, it'll be really interesting to see which way they go here. Yeah, I'm personally a fan of what you described. Go underground, get the good loot out of Fey March, take a quick look at the underground shops, tell me if my sirens are showing up and then get out before I get bogged down, set up the shield of wonders. But we'll see what our runners do. JDP heading right to Mycidia. He's gonna check those two chests and Kedril is gonna look like Luton Baron. So both of our runners putting the magma off for the moment. We've got a Cecil and a Sparkle in the Baron Inn and we've got a French Vanilla Palum and Iridium. It's a Black Mage party so far. Everything you could need to take advantage of that warp glitch early on, it looks like. We do have the Sea Relax flag on, so there could be an edge somewhere in one of these free spots. Uh, he does not have to be gated behind a key item. That's right, and that is certainly something you're always happy to see early on. His speed and his levels and equipment that he starts out with make him very overpowered for the early game. JDP heading over to Damsan. He's going to pick up another character there. And uh, Kedril is going to make the Magna Key play we were talking about. You love to see early divergence. And Haggart putting on a little bit of a block, though. Finds lives, though, early on. That's always good to see, especially he's got a couple items that he can sell and get those out of the way so he doesn't have to come back here. He doesn't know that Aridia is waiting for him in Mesidia, so that Odin not quite so enticing yet. And there's an Odin in Damsian Basement anyway, so hopefully no one spends money on that. I personally don't like going for the, uh, the buying of the Odin. It's a... Uh, I can't remember which tier exactly. I think it's a tier five item, so it's pretty common to find out in the world. I mean, there are some people that even when they find Odin free, it's just, up. Oh, I'm going to quickly sell that, but... You've got a punch mage. Shell out the money for it the way you might do for a sylph. 
got Punch Mage at the top of uh, the MCM, also known as Yang, also known as the Karate Man. Uh, wondering if how long he'll be staying in the party. A lot of people are not fans of him. I'm a fan of Yang late in the game. I'm a fan of him as well, particularly if you set up the slingshot. Ran something not too long ago where the only reason I got through a required giant of Babel that had a DKC in the CPU is that I brought along a punch mage. This is definitely a party of old men. We got Sid hanging out in the watery pass. Old men and young black mages. Dropping the Rydia. He's comfortable with those Quake kids and the other old men that uh, just, you know, keep him going along. Well, if he's planning on hitting ordeals to get Tella for warp, then Rydia does suffer a bit from stat growth and hit point growth compared to Palom. So tougher for her to contribute in the end game. She can certainly pull it off, but you definitely feel better if you can get a summon. Kedril's uh, doing his looting route through Dwarf Castle now. He's hitting both towers early on. I like this play if you can get here early. Uh, there's a lot of chess here, it's, even though it is a lot of walking around. Uh, with T Wildish on, anything can be found anywhere. And uh, he's going for some quantity. Yeah, and that is one of the great things with an early magma start. You suddenly have a lot of options. And it's a wonderful thing to watch as well, see how each runner feels its best. JDP, for instance, is diving into the waterfall with use, being able to use Tella to exit out of it, and I've seen him find a Lunar Staff and a Black Rose so far. And will Kedril be a hero of the people this early in the sea to validate? Well, he has indeed found sirens in the shop in Tamra. It's the only thing they're selling and probably the only thing he would care about. And it looks like it. He's at least going to loot. Hopefully we won't have the ultimate heel turn. Nope, he is a broker's floor representative. It's not a bad occupation for him to be hanging down, although I'm not sure how many dwarves would be uh, making use of his service in these times. Well, hopefully he's not an unemployed job dwarf at any rate. Otherwise, he might have to turn to other lines of work that would be more disturbing. Ketro, I think, found a siren, was hoping maybe to crack an egg and get Palom up to virus early, but realizing he may not have a, a way to kill that dragon, even in an egg. <laughs> that and he also might have looked at the fact that he only had two members in his party and decided that all of that xp should not fall on three empty slots chat hoping that uh tello would be able to pull off a recall and get a stone off or weak stone weak is fatal an option i think uh, there's a few things that if the roll comes up high could take down that egg yeah, JDP heading down in the Antlion Cave. He's going to be looking to uh, get that objective done. It is one of the, it is the easiest boss besides uh, the Mist Cave. Yep, and do your objectives. Don't put them off for too long. JDP. You know, there are a couple members of the community who are fading Antlion in their runs. Do not do that in this one. <laughs> Um, I think it would be really diehard dedication to Team Fade Antlion to do so in this race. Kedril finishing up, and hopefully we'll peek these bosses and see what we got at the uh, required Asura spot as the Queen of Monsters. Looks like he's not saving to avoid the temptation of being drawn into a fight. We have a Bahamut in the Queen spot for the required, and a blue robe in the Leviathan spot. Even if that's the delectable tea that is the Water Hag, it's not exactly going to be free there. That Leviathan spot is one of the hardest hitting spots in the game, and that Water Hag will rock your world for a while. He will hit half hard, and he will hit fast. If you set your relative agility up right, 
and lower the battle speed enough, you'll be fine. But if you just try and casually walk into it, you're going to be rudely checked. A chat pointing out that Kedril picked up the Adamant sitting in the Fey March, so uh, maybe Fey and Antline not so bad there if he can find that Legend Sword. I expect he'll get around to it sooner or later. <laughs> I, I agree, if only but... to avoid that Riven Room. <laughs> avoid the Riven Room, that Bahamut there in Asura, not too rude, so uh, I'm hoping that uh, maybe something rude is waiting for him up on the moon. JDP giving us extra leg. Not only does he trigger the nylon effect, but he even cooks in the Rubicon with an extra flame wand. Maybe keep him around a little longer. Didn't stick around too long, has now transitioned into Valvalis. Uh, does not have the extra magic defense in the elements form. Uh, I suspect that uh, JDP will make short work of this. Yeah, in a spot like this with so little hit points, there's only so much you can do to prolong that leg. Kedril finding his uh, Rydia and Palum and Mysidia. I assume he'll probably continue his uh, looting and shopping around the world. And it's a spoon over in Antlion Cave. The Evans? spoon? Yep. The spoon flag is turned on, so if there is an Edward out there, some runners like to take uh, advantage of that spoon's power. He can be the ultimate glass cannon, because even if you do load him up with, say, a power shirt, he still has only so much in the way of hit point. At least he comes back row glitched, so you can tuck him somewhat safely. And as a lot of people uh, like to utilize Eddie strats, he can dodge those big veins at will as long as he can time them correctly. And a few other bosses where his ability to hide can come in play as well. But let's see who this ordeals character is. There's the edge I was talking about earlier. I think he that will probably uh, replace either the punch mage, yeah. Yeah, real fast. Um, I do like Yang, but it's, it's hard to argue with an early edge versus Yang. I understand. I missed some of Kedril's looting to see uh, if he had found maybe a long blade or even a ninja blade somewhere. Uh, but with T Wildish, there could be Murasames, there could be Masamoons hiding out in the world too. Looks like he hasn't, because he did not take the opportunity at the save point to equip them, but maybe this is why Edge was looming around on Mount Ordeals. He just couldn't bring himself to do what needed to be done here. Uh, King and Queen Evelyn, you, you hate to see him this early in a spot like this. Um, some parties uh, would benefit from this more, but picking up that Edge, uh, this is... Uh, a free fight that you wish you would see later on. And uh, Sid hanging out on the top of Hobbs with some Baron Guards. Someone else you don't want to see early. The Baron Guards can be rude if you don't have answers, but there are several ways to deal with their nonsense and their... Oh, wait, no, it's not the Baron Guards. The card's it's... Kaipo Guards. Kaipo Guards. So, second that. You definitely don't want to see these early. These are much easier to deal with than Baron Guards. And for those who don't know, this is a fight that you fight early in the vanilla game, and you only have to defeat the three red guards, uh, and the green one will run away. There are He, unfortunately, takes all the experience with him, though, as the majority of the XP at that spot is uh, on that last guard. So a lot of people like to find ways to get him down using some instant death spells or toad to keep him from running and uh, to get that extra XP. And the Baron Guards have made an appearance in the back attack spot. Uh, very high magic defense here, so the Palums missed their twin attack on this one. Uh, so they might have a little problem, unless maybe he goes to pop that beat bell. Not sure if it was magic defense or just one of them being out of MP. If he just, if JDP uh, just straight across, he might have used up all of his magic before he got through but I don't think there's going to be a problem in any case. Yeah, once the mute bell goes out, you're just dealing with the physical attacks of these uh, guards. 
Uh, you're not dealing with these piggies and sizes and, uh, of their counterattacks. So they may hit hard, but the, the counterattack is really what gets a lot of people on here. And Ed showing off the quality of his early gear. He comes in with a bandana, a black belt, and a sil pair of silver gauntlets. He's not at all impressed by the swords of these guards. As coupled that with the high level that he comes in, I believe he comes in at 25. Unfortunately, JDP is really trying to get some levels on his tiny mage, and this guard is having nothing with it. The board AI going straight to him immediately after being revived. Kedril finding the uh, Calbrenna dolls over in Fable, it looks like. Uh, he's got a Gaia drum queued up for them. That's a very good use of those J items. You're, they're most valuable early when your party hasn't powered up, so when you come across fights that can you can employ them, you're going to want to do that quickly. And I'm not sure if Kedril, uh, Kedril uh, went and uh, checked in on Yang. I believe he did, so he'll be able to get two key item checks here and finds a Baron key for his troubles. Opening up more checks, character checks, and key item checks, continuing to have many options open. This is the sort of thing that can get a little dangerous. You get to a point where it just comes down to who makes the right check first, and you've just got to go with what you feel is best and hope it works out. And only an hour class three. Also, I noticed on JDP's side, uh, he is doing a what's called a back row glitch for Edge in the uh, Final Fantasy IV game. Uh, the game does not recognize when you unequip a ranged item after you equip one, so it just enables them to always hit from the back row. So you could, he could throw that edge in the back row, get half defense, or double his defense, take half damage, and uh, do full damage still. And a blue robe has appeared in the tomb, and the bad news is that it is the alt gauntlet, which... Is actually somewhat mixed news in this spot. It's normally a free XP location, but fighting the monsters here means you'll actually get some leveling for your trouble. Good news is that we now know that the water hag is down at the King of Monsters spot. Yeah, it's, it's almost a free fame arch. Uh, while that water hag will hit hard, there are a lot of ways to mitigate it. Bahamut uh, can be pretty free as long as you can do enough damage before your star veils or walls run out. pointing out there was a life staff hanging out in the king's room in Fable. Thank you to our uh, tracker microcorps for confirming that and also thanks to uh, Gambit017 uh, for uh, restreaming tonight. Gambit has a tendency to roll up something that looks inviting, but turns out to be really mean, and given the number of free bosses we've seen early on, there's a definite potential for that meanness to be waiting. It's like a buffet where everything is open and free early on, but then you regret it later. <laughs> Kendra well, picking up his spoon. We'll see if the end of this seed comes back to haunt our runners the way a bad buffet might. JDP's still working on this conference. Yeesh. He's not doing too bad with it. Uh, his palms are getting up to uh, virus, which is really going to help him when he takes on Baron N here in a second. Uh, his edge is taking care of things that don't get killed by these spells. He, this, is, this is probably really good XP for him uh, to really boost his team up. Yeah, it's just a case where you've got to resign yourself for the fact that you've got to get through six fights, and he's definitely getting through it as efficiently as one can, but still feels a little rough. And he's through. He'll be rewarded with any Paladin Cecils out there, if he can find them, and Tella getting his full repertoire of spells. And perhaps a quick trip back underground to handle the warp, which is in order, but we'll see where he goes.
Pedral. Giving up on Tella. Picking up Yang. I'm not sure about that unless he is planning to fade Dwarf Castle for quite a long time looking at his objectives. That could be his plan. He does have a Baron key, so there's another character hanging out there. Um, as he heads right back to the underground and making his way to Tom. I believe Sirens were here, if I recall correctly. You, you recall correctly. Sirens and nothing but This item shop dwarf making a killing from free enterprise runners. <laughs> they will come back here and probably be shopping early and often. JDP might find himself cash strapped enough that he opts to. You know what? Never mind. <laughs> Sometimes when runners are cash strapped enough, they opt to steal the sirens, but he's got poison axes and so many other things for sale that I don't think that's going to be a problem. He's also still got a ninja sh uh, ninja shirt sitting in there. While uh, a side grade for Edge, it increases his defense but lowers his damage. Uh, a lot of people just opt to sell it, and it is worth a pretty penny. It's fair. It is worth a lot. It, but the defense value on that shirt is all around something pretty amazing, and it then immediately frees up a black belt that Edge was wearing, which someone else might appreciate. That is typically my strategy. Uh, if I find an early ninja shirt and I'm rocking an Edge and a Yang, uh, they will uh, trade clothes uh, for a little while, at least until I find another black belt or somebody to replace the Yang, if I replace the Yang. And I see Kedril got a curse ring somewhere. That's going to solve anchoring issues. One of the lovely things about Sid, assuming you don't have a vanilla agility Cecil with you, is that he can get levels um, to the point of having a lot of hit points and still be a functional anchor. And Kedril opted to crack some eggs. Now. Go ahead and just... <laughs> you want to make sure your first egg gets scrambled easy. Once you get a little practice with cooking, you can get a little more creative. But the egg hatches when you hit it the first time, and after that it has some nasty counters and just some rude physical attacks on its own. Really want to make sure the first couple of fights when your party is weak, you don't run into any of them. With both palms with stop, they'll uh, once they get enough power, they'll be able to reliably stop the egg. But they're also getting quake here, so that should speed this along. Yeah, usually JDP. only maybe those first couple of eggs that cause it. Sorry, go ahead. When JDP's heading down to Thay March. He will be finding that adamant in those fights down there. I wonder if he feels confident enough with either of them. We'll find out shortly. At least he will know without having to peek that it's a water hag he faces having gone through ordeals. Yeah, Kedril fa fading ordeals still. That's probably why he dumped that Tella. Uh, figured with Sirens uh, available in Tamra, he's just going to crack eggs to get to his levels. That's a good point. A lot of people are not a fan of ordeals. Going through three boss fights for a key item it just like any other key item location if you leave it alone too long and it has exactly what you need we know that's not the case but from his point of view he doesn't know so it's tough when things open up this much deciding what to leave behind and what to prioritize i missed it on kedril's trip but jdp shows us there's bacchus wines uh, hanging out in fame march as well that's a lovely thing to have with the party members we've seen. We've seen a ninja, we've seen a engineer, and we've seen a monk. They all love to drink up on that box. Chat pointing out that uh, possibly with this party and uh, uh, that water hack should be doable. If he's got a cursed ring, it's completely doable. In fact, if you put a curse ring on somebody so that the rest of your party is at RA1 and you lower the battle speed to 6, you can take down that water hag without even taking a single shot. 
I don't believe JDP has found the curse ring that uh, Kedril has. That does make it a much more interesting proposition, but he's coming back here to save and use a tent, so it looks like he's going to take on at least one of the fights. I missed it as well. Uh, does anybody in chat see where the curse ring came from? Quite possibly from a shop somewhere. Could be a shop. On this flag set, cursed rings can show up in any armor shop. But also just been a loot that he grabbed that JDP did. I don't remember which of them dove the watery pass, for example. Uh, JDP dove the watery pass, but uh, Kedril has been to Fabul, so could have found it in the shop there, um, or one of the chests around Fabul Castle. Coffee and Chocobos is telling us that it's an antlion cave. From the Demist in Baron Inn. Hidden behind the first boss. That's spicy. Again, with Magma opening up, Baron Inn can often end up on the list of locations that you leave for later. Putting a D-mist and turning this into a surprise double check makes it even more likely that leaving it behind could be punishing. And his squat kid's making really short work of that as JDP is getting star veils up for this Bahamut. And the darkness crystal for Ken. And now it's completely open, everyone. We have magma, we have darkness, and we have other items such as the Baron Key that are unlocking locations. This is where it just time He's to go get. Mode. He is go mode at 25 it's minutes. True. The guess level. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. The guessing is done. Now, yep. here's an interesting question. Do you go do some more eggs, get up to where you can handle some moon bosses and just clear the objectives? Or do you maybe look for that legend sword for a little bit? Personally, if I'm in Kedril's situation, I've seen sirens underground. I have go mode. I'm going to go. I'm going to make sure I like my party. I'm going to go underground. Or I might be inclined to do a D machine grind if I still have Tella. I don't know if Kedril has Tella, but if so. But either way, I'm going to level up immediately, get to my Z ready, and then knock out the Queen of Monsters and go up to the moon, take out the ribbon, and walk down to Z from there. JDP clearing the, uh, the Bahamut fight. And he got a nice power shirt as a reward. I, Kedril might be looking for Cure 3s. Uh, he has a White Mage. He did dump the Tella. So I'm wondering if he's hunting around for the Cure 3s and hoping they're in the seat somewhere. And if he's hunting for Cure 3s, I will personally be curious to see if he also buys Vampires and Star Veils. Oh, no, he does turn down the Vampires. There's a low-level strat out for dealing with Zeromus that involves vampires, Cure Threes, Silk Web, and it lets you get there without having to do a lot of the grind. If there's a free-ish boss at the Ribbon Room, that could be a play. But that is apparently not on Kedril's radio. And I believe JDP is here at Baron Inn now. Yep, he is, so he'll be getting that Darkness Crystal shortly. He does have the Tella, so he could go and set up a D machine grind and really slingshot past uh, Kedril doing egg strats. As Kedril is going to raise the moon or the big whale, probably still looking for whatever item uh, is uh, he's hunting for. Did Kedril check Demis? I do not believe he did. Apparently not, because Gambit is saying, what if? And that would be very interesting if Demist pulled Legend and you could just forsake the Ribbon Room entirely. Perhaps JDP will make that check. I hate to fade that check because if I spend maybe two minutes between when I fight Demist and make the check, then I might forget it entirely. 
picking up the Cecil. Uh, named Avenger. <laughs> Hoping for an Avenger for her Cecil, perhaps. I think he's, he should be happy with that silver staff that he comes with. <laughs> well, we go with the Poison Axe. Not a bad uh, array of gear to start off with with a bandana, power shirt, and strength ring. Uh, if he can find that Avenger and one of the Holy Swords, uh, he probably won't feel too bad about leveling that Cecil up. His schedule is heading down back into the Veymarch. Probably going to knock that objective out now that he's in go mode. And JDP finding those Cure 3s. Uh, they're in Baron. Right next door, as it turns out. Is he going to pick up 20 of them? Very yeah, he did. <laughs> uh, welcome to the raid, uh, Jenica Strife's crew, 25. Uh, welcome to Free Enterprise. We have a highway to the three stone race going on between JDP and Kedril from the Carbuncle Group. And so far, it looks pretty jetty, but we could still have room for a troll up in the ribbon room. Yeah, we are 30 minutes in and both runners are in go mode and a hook at the Demis spot. Not the legend sword we were all hoping for. It's just the way it goes sometimes. Kedril's taking on the Bahamut and shouldn't have any more problem than JDP did, so... Going to, um, as it often does with a quick go mode, probably to who figures out the more efficient grind question chat it is yes a key item uh as jdp may be looking to climb to 10 to have a quicker grind i don't know if he's got his uh, eyes set on eggs or d, d machines but uh he's heading to the dwarf cave possibly looking for that double or doing some shopping maybe both we'll see but that silk web is a lovely find you want at least one for zeros And looks like he's going to make the loot of the towers now that he's here. He missed that the other three were empty and has to backtrack. I have made that mistake many a time. Sparse 60 will catch you sometimes. You get into the rhythm of looting everywhere and you don't take that quick look around as you enter a room. I know the, that in the tower, lower tower of Babel, I've charged straight into an empty room that was supposed to have an alert chest and clicked on it before I realized that there was no point. My bane is the Fey March in the Sylph Cave where the screen is flashing and I don't realize the chest was open. Oh yeah, gotta turn those flash effects off. I hate it when I forget to do that and that's one very good reason for it. looking through these chests uh, finds another silk web after I believe he just bought one uh, he is heading down into the uh, basement chest I believe there's three down there there are and when you've got an exit mage you can make some deep loot dives hey do you like silk webs <laughs> apparently the dwarves like silk webs hanging out because they had a few <laughs> If the legend sword proves to be too difficult to find, then those extra silk webs might come in handy for that ribbon room fight if it's something. And Kedril heading up to the moon. Meanwhile, we've got a pain man in the front of the dwarf castle boss pair. That's pretty rude. It proves to be a strong setup, and depending on who's in back of this fight, it can make for some very rude dwarf castles. Ogopogo in particular comes to mind. 
He does have a level one Cecil that should slow this down a little bit. Uh, the Cecil starts off at 13 agility. Yeah, so he'll have time to get some healing in between waves. That's certainly fast enough to keep this DKC from hitting too fast, but you see how the damage is coming in at 400 a pop. He's still going to leave a mark. He can get a couple of cures off and uh, still be prepped and ready for the next fight. Oh, he did a bluff instead of a heal. Habit, perhaps. There's If you're good with Pelham, you have the habit that you should never parry with him. You should always at least bluff. So a little muscle memory, perhaps. But here we have our speech. And here we have a moon character. Who is hanging out on the moon throne tonight? Uh. Ah. Yeah. <laughs> that, with, with how early this go mode has been, I don't know what Kedril's skill is in terms of an Eddie strat, uh, but he's taking him. And even if you're not an Eddie strats person, the fact that you've got a spoon and a power shirt sitting around and the ability just to slingshot him, you could also just level Eddie and go for that extra damage even, and here we are. It's power shirt spoon word time. And that other Sid will be getting that cursed ring. Uh, JDP found a, another monk uh, as the character and finds Mylon Z. And that's no threat following up. We see Edge showing off that he can handle this just fine. JDP's speeding it up a little bit with some darting. Not a lot of health at this spot. I think it's got about 3,000, so Edge will make pretty short work of this. Kedril looks like he's heading over to Bahamut, as a lot of people like to uh, call it the Cave of Value. There's always value at Cave Bahamut, and if you don't believe me, talk to the boss there after you're done fighting him. We already beat Bahamut in this seat. He can't tell us anything. Well, the boss there can tell us something, and bosses here speak after they're beaten. Oh, pops a siren. Oh, I forgot that this is a spot that you can do the two King Ryu fight. Yeah. A lot of people will go for the fight one floor up from the save room in the LST, but you can catch them here. If you're hanging around the Murasame altar, you can find them there as well. JDP finding a package using the warp glitch. Not the most exciting item, but again, if he's looking to get the 10 before he does his grind, he's one step closer. Egg. One out of two. Yeah, and there's enough to, um, characters that are probably going to be on the threshold of Big Bang survival that that apple isn't going to be the worst thing in the world. Again, probably not exactly what he was looking for. Kedril making short work of those uh, gold dragons. Uh, he had an hourglass to stop him, and his quick kids are taking care of him, weakening him down. I miss if he got the life glitch off or not. 90,000 XP says he did, and that's 28 levels for Eddie. JDP looking at those sirens. Certain. Is good. Two is better. <laughs> and Eddie quickly hides. <laughs> Suddenly, 60 HP doesn't feel as good. Looks like he might not have had an hourglass for these dragons, though. And that's going to make this a bit spicier. These dragons are preferably handled with hourglasses for a reason. They're rude with a lot of attacks, and you really don't want to have to face them. They are stoppable, so it's curious why he wouldn't be uh, trying to use stop or uh, possibly stone on them. Both are uh, possible are able to work. The quake's coming out. 
doing some damage, and both dragons are down. Yeah, no chance for a life glitch there, but still, we got 60k. We got a few more levels along the way. And JDP working on his eggs. He, uh, we saw a dragon pop out of one, 30k XP more. Kendrel going with the hourglass this time. He did have some hourglasses. It looked like he just wanted to give it a shot, see if it could play. He has many more sirens than hourglasses, so perhaps just trying to get a couple in for free, but is going to go ahead and handle this one with the straight forward. And JDP having Quake now, he's going to start making a lot quicker work of the eggs. Uh, the eggs give about half the amount of XP that these gold dragons do. Uh, so while JDP will probably kill eggs faster than uh, Kedril with the gold dragons, uh, and Kedril can also showing off the life glitch there uh, to trick the game into thinking it killed three instead of two. It'll be yep, uh, yep. interesting to see who gets the Zoromus levels first. Yeah, and that's going to separate the gap even more. 34k for an egg, 60 or 90k with a life glitch. Kedril definitely looks to have the edge in terms of the better grind. Except JDP has the edge. JDP has the edge, but Kedril has the better grind. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Coffee, Coffee and Chocobo uh, asking, uh, Kedril does not look to have any Bacchus ones. I do not know if JDP does. I haven't had a good chance to look at his inventory. I know he knows that they're in the Fey March. I don't remember if Kedril checked out the item shop down there. Uh, while we're going in the grind, I uh, want to take another chance to uh, thank my co-commentator, Commander Leon Hart, for joining me in the booth. And we also have Microcorgs uh, doing the tracking, lighting up all those buttons for us, keeping us honest with where things are, and Gambit17 doing the restreaming for us. Thank you guys for uh, helping me put on a good show tonight. And thank you as well, Bad Karma, for being here with me in the booth. Always a pleasure. Also, give uh, give our two runners a, uh, a follow, uh, Justin MVP and uh, Kedril. They've been putting on a good show for us, even with it being a little jetty, uh, showing how a couple route divergences and can still get you to the same spot in a lot of cases. Yeah, and if you ask a lot of runners, a lot of them will tell you that a jet seed worries them more than a tough route. A tough route where there's only one way to go through you can hope it's a win on execution by being the one that handles the tough spot better, but something jetty and open like this, every little thing that you did that didn't play out just sits there in the back of your mind as time lost. And if you're enjoying this, we do have some more Highway to the Three Miss Zone uh, races uh, going on. We have one currently going on over at Randomania another one later tonight uh, highway to the three miss is the annual uh three uh, zemus zone league for free enterprise so, so we will have many more races coming up and uh if you are enjoying keep an eye out on these channels to watch more races and if you're looking at this randomizer and thinking hey this will be fun to do well you're right but in that case wander on over to the discord there's a lot of information on how to play the randomizer, how to get it set up, and a lot of helpful people that will get you started and offer their advice. I've only been doing this for a few months, but I still dove right into this tournament. And it's been a lot of fun, and it's an incredibly welcoming community. I, I may be biased. Definitely one of the best communities out there hands down it's the most friendliest that i've ever dealt with uh everybody's willing and uh, happy to answer any questions you have because they want everyone not only to be having fun but for leagues like this we want as high a turnout as we got i believe this is the biggest free enterprise tournament that has been ever put on i believe you're right there it looks like Kedril is done with his grind for now and has wandered back to Earth to take care of some shopping. 
has picked up a good stack of Cure Threes. Huge stash of Star Veils. Kedril probably uh, gearing up for a deep dive, knowing he has no White Mage. <laughs> Chat making reference to a uh, a run submission from the other day that was uh, a very rude seed for the runners. Yeah, submitted for the Rogarama Marathon, which likes to put on things that require a lot of RNG and a lot of resetting. And the fine people here at Free Enterprise, with their knowledge of the flag sets, made sure to set up something spicy. Kedril grabbing some hourglasses. He's hoping that maybe there's a free fight or in case he has to do more gold dragons uh, to get through a rude fight while uh, JDP continues to crack eggs. I suspect he will uh, be wrapping up his egg grind hopefully here soon so he can get up to the moon. Uh, Boss Morpheus, he did not head back to the fame marks to get those Bacchus ones. No. You want to be as prepared as you can, but those Bacchus definitely would have helped. We'll see how it, it It is kind of a uh, kind of a run to get down there and get out um, just to go and buy them. You may not have the money uh, when you have some other priority items you'd rather have. Uh, Bacchus wines will speed up the Zeromas fight, but it can also be doable without them. But yeah, without even a white mage to cast Berserk, the uh, the melee fighters here are going to be really, really sad, Eddie in particular. He may just be banking on those twins and uh, Eddie doing what Eddie can. Maybe there'll be a Kanazo in the ribbon room, like records, and we will have turtle soup. I believe Kanazo was uh, who gave us our starting idol. Oh, I often forget that boss in the bygone spot. Unfortunate. I won't lie, I uh, I forgot to. Somebody in chat pointed it out a lot earlier. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not. I, I, unfortunately, I also forgot who said it earlier. So, uh, my Chat apologies. And tracker. <laughs> Chat and trackers keeping us straight. We don't even have the chance for turtle soup and friends because I do remember the elements of that. Kedril is not done leveling. Now that he's got those hourglasses, he says, "Give me some more gold dragon." And JDP finding hourglasses, I would not be surprised if he does not take on a couple of gold dragon fights. He still has sirens left. But we are here at 46 minutes in with two objectives. Runners approaching Z levels and in the vicinity of that third objective. This is definitely, I mean, What's the worst thing that could be at Ribbon, and how bad could it be? Wyvern. We still haven't seen Wyvern. Golbez, always good for a laugh, and uh, that is a high magic spot, I believe. CPU will be rude. You're going to get through it, but you're going to hate every minute of it. I, I, uh, JDP would probably be a lot better off than Kedril, uh, considering the party makeup between the, you know, with what he has and what Kedril has. True, especially if he picked up some Bacchus. He could link one of the orbs in front and go with Zerker strats. He's got Tella to reapply that blink as needed. He's also got Tella to apply the Berserk, too. Uh, although uh, Kedril Shang is starting to get pretty beefy, he's got 4k HP. He must be in the upper 40s uh, to be about that high. Punch Mage gets strong. 
and you don't have to do much in the way of hunting for gear for him. If Eddie hadn't shown up with a spoon to take the really good stuff, you'd just slap that power shirt and strength ring right on him and let him go to town. And JDP making a dive. He skipped K value. He is going probably right to the ribbon room to at least see what he's dealing with. If he doesn't stop to grind along the way. Yeah, there's a few different spots you can find these gold dragons. What do you do? Do you stop and uh, kill some dragons on the way down, or do you go check out and see what you're dealing with? Hmm, probably check. There's a decent amount of XP at that spot, and if I'm going to take it on anyway, and I can do it now, then I can cut a couple of gold dragons off of my fight. Or maybe just one, but even so, I'll take the extra time. I do not believe we have uh, too many free bosses left uh, available to us, so... True, but in the low 40s. Plus, if it is something where a spe getting, reaching a specific power level matters, that's not free. Oh, that's not free. <laughs> well... That, that, that's not free. <laughs> we forgot Evil Wall. How could we forget that, Evil Wall? <laughs> if it likes to roll required evil wall into his seeds and uh, does not disappoint and JDP did not heal up before this fight so his twins are a little low on magic <laughs> and Hermish is suggesting some ideas and I am not here for the I am only here for one of these ideas please do not randomize my Hummingway shop I don't need this <laughs> I'm not sure I'm going to look for that shop. <laughs> I forever. <laughs> I had recently suggested randomizing the trap tile in the hook route. We sincerely hope that the evil wall has not crashed through JDP's monitor and taken this fight to a whole level, but just some technical difficulties regardless. I'm sure that Gamma's going to have it back up and running in no time. Uh, hopefully JDP didn't just throw his monitor out the window seeing the evil wall there. <laughs> uh, looks like Kedril's about to come down and get the bad news. Kedril's levels to see where he was at to see if maybe he got a uh, nuke on his kids. Would definitely help out a lot with the evil wall. The other thing that might help in this spot, I don't know the numbers, and today all has a very lovely chart on the aforementioned Discord and website. In certain spots, depending on the hit points the wall has and how hard he punches, you can just hide Eddie, and once everyone else has fallen down, when Evil Wall has no one to swing at, he will start taking himself. I think at this spot, uh, the physical damage is uh, not going to be high enough to get through the huge amount of XP that I believe this spot has. And Eddie's not going to get a chance to hide anyway. <laughs> Bam. <laughs> First shot. Glass cannon breaks. But... He did get that nuke you were asking about, so that's going to help a lot. Yep. One of these kids does have an assassin dagger. And combined, the nuke's doing about 12k uh, together, so... Maybe about four or five rounds, he could probably get through this all right. Yeah, as long as enough of those hits stick to those beefy front row characters, if he starts reaching into the back row, might not keep his kids up long enough. I suspect that Yang and Sid will be relegated to chemist duties here really soon. They often find themselves filling that role in the end. Personally, wouldn't want to go with 
Hero Reflect Strats with only two mages. Well, I can definitely see some sort of a hybrid here. Oof, even that Sid taking about 12 hand of damage, although I, he's wearing a curse string and I think still the prisoner guard. Yeah, that, that, that's not going to do much for his longevity. Are you Susane over there, Commander? I mean... <laughs> 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 And he is rewarded with 100,000 uh, XP and his final objective. And Kedril is rewarded with the crystal, a pan and a pass. I mean, sure, put the pass on the moon behind the objective that gets you the crystal. Go down and save in case you wipe, and then you can be out of the fight quicker. But, eh. Petrol's probably thinking it's time to go. Go, go, go. And uh, one of the uh, things about the free enterprise is... The one thing that can't be randomized is where Zeromus is. He has to still always hang out on the moon. But one thing is randomized. Commander, you want to take this one? Yeah. What we randomize here is in the vanilla game, when you use the crystal on Zeromus, he transforms into his alternate form. And when that happens, he's always the same sprite, but that's a little boring. So our lovely Scholar Kitty has put together over 450 different sprites that Zeromus can transform to, and that leads to a very important question, and that is, whose butt are you going to kick tonight? Get your Z flags out if you haven't already, free, uh, free Enterprise. Personally, potato muscle is my favorite, but there are a lot of good, a lot of good options. A ton of great options. I have not seen a sprite I have not enjoyed. Uh, I got to witness the flip a table miss. I haven't seen that one. <laughs> nice. <laughs> and yeah, Palom's yes. getting some bluffs going. Those are some strong characters. We're over 2,000 hit points on the Palums. I I very much like Kedril's chances. You never want to take Zoromus for granted. He will humble you if you do, but I do like Kedril's chances here. Uh, chat. Chat asking uh, whether the bluff will persist. I do not believe so. If I recall correctly, every time Zeroma shakes in this form, all the buffs are wiped out. I think you're right as well, Bad Karma, but I wouldn't say that with 100% confidence, but that is definitely where I'd put my money if someone forced me to go. And, and Salamis. Huh. Do you know where this is from, Bad Karma? I do, actually. This is from uh, an old Super Nintendo game RPG called Arcana. This is the final boss. Ah! And this is the second time I've seen it all in the last seven days. It's the first time I've seen it ever, but I've definitely heard some lovely Arcana renditions on the Twin Heart. Uh, if you have not played Arcana, I would highly recommend it. And if you want a challenge, don't look up maps for it either. Duly noted. We have uh, Sid doing chemist duties. We have the Silkweb go out to nerf the Big Bang that's going to come out, and Reflect Strats are underway.
bouncing the nukes because if you hit Jeromus with the nuke directly, he rudely counters with his own spell, which can be useful at very specific times, but for the most part, you're not going to want to do it. When you have less characters, you may want to pull that off, but I would suspect that uh, he is just going to continue reflected nukes to not get those nasty nuke counters on his team, especially with no white mage. And it does look like he's quite content to just bounce nukes. Zeromus has a thing where the amount of hit points the designers wanted to give him exceeded the capabilities of the Super Nintendo game system. So they set up a point in his script where he refills his hit points. But that script only counters if you deal damage to him directly. By bouncing spells off the walls, you manage to avoid that skip and you deal about half the damage that you would normally have to. And keep in mind, the reflected strat works on any boss's script where a boss would counter uh, direct damage. So the elements forms uh, change can be bypassed if you bounce spells off of yourself. Uh, there's a number of other ones where the counter can be avoided uh, and you can just continue to do the same amount of damage. Yeah, that's a very good point. Sura and Ogopogo come to mind, and Kedril showing how quickly you can deal with it with a bunch of reflected nukes as he is through. That might be sub-hour. We're going to have to wait for the official time to show up, but that's going to be very close. GG in any case, Kedril. Well done. And it is sub hour, 59.49. Get your GGs in chat for Kedril. That is a, a fantastic run. Uh... Um, so we were informed during the fight, we wanted to wait until the end of the match. Uh, JDP's computer crashed in the middle of his run. Uh, and it was happened shortly after Kedril uh, did his dot done, and so that is why GDP has forfeited the match. It's rough. Yeah. It's, it's unfortunate, but hopefully JDP is going to be able to resolve that and in time for his third match. But meanwhile, Kedril has joined us here for a uh, post-game yeah, Congratulations. Thank you. Jeez. Sub hour. Uh, I don't care how you see That's a thing to be proud of. <laughs> I just squeaked it under there. I was pretty <laughs> happy about that. Last night's seed was not that. So, you know, it was good to get, get it back. Uh, I personally can only count the number of times I've subbed hour in a free enterprise seed, and it's, tw it, it's two. <laughs> <laughs> You're two ahead of me. <laughs> So what do you think of the thing, Kedril? Uh, I thought it was good. I felt a little all over the place at first. Uh, I kind of wish I didn't take Edward and probably kept an Iridia. I just, I, I saw Edward and I had the spoon and I was like, well, I have to. Like, it's part of the rules. So I took him and then ground him up, but he didn't really do anything. <laughs> After the fact, I mean, he helped kill a few gold dragons, but that was about it. The twins were really carried it. Yeah. Despite it's, not it's hard to argue with Nuke. Yeah. Despite not finding any uh, stat sticks for the twins, you uh, you made you made really good with them. Yeah, and I saw in the after I dot dunned, I saw in the chat that I still had an assassin dagger equipped, which I'm going to have to assume. Probably lowers one of the stats. That it does. Bummer. But I don't know. I think the the bluffing before the transformation, I definitely think it carries forward because they are both doing one was doing quad nines and the other was doing like eight and a half K. Whereas versus Evil Wall it was like five and seven. Yeah, we were debating about that. Uh, I recall early in my free enterprise, somebody mentioning to me that buffs don't uh, persist through the shaking of Zeromus then. Yeah. Uh, 
but I've never tested it myself, and I've always trusted other people. There we go. I uh, see. I I read that it did, but who knows? At, at the end of the day, you got through. Yeah, I made it through. And. We always have the option of just testing it ourselves, showing up at Z with someone that clearly can't do all nines. <laughs> Ten times, and either you're going to get your nines or a low damage, and you'll have your answer. <laughs> yeah. I did, uh, were there any white mages? Save for Tella, did JDP find any? Nope. Uh, was wrong Other than a huh. All right, well. Been somewhere tucked away, but we didn't see <laughs> Probably on Giant, but I'm not going to go check that. Right? <laughs> <laughs> giant or not? <laughs> yeah. You did get that package there right after the ribbon room. You could have ran back down and checked. That's true. And even after the credits here, you'll see why I didn't. Because <laughs> 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 I, no, I have no exit. So I had to... <laughs> Basically, uh, when the heart music's going to come up pretty soon, I basically had to start almost a new game. It was back at my first save, which was just before I got rid of Rydia on Hobbs, because all I could see is me getting rid of Rydia and then Fabul giving me a Bahamut or something. So I was, I had a save prepared if I needed to reset out. <laughs> it's usually what happens here, to me. He checks his job dwarf, he gives us the music after the credits thanks to the new feature, and he gives us a spoon. <laughs> um, so, this puts you at two and one and gets you into the magma group, along with some other people that have already made it there that are stiff competition. How are you feeling about moving into magma? Uh, pretty good. Um, I like the seed set and I find it's it's pretty fast. Um, so I'm feeling pretty comfortable about it. My, uh, my loss last night was, it basically came down to, I think, reflect vs not reflect. And I chose to not reflect, which really bit me in the butt. So that's why I focus so heavily on it tonight. You played it well, you played, uh, you, you got to the underground really quick and you got that go mode first. Uh, how did you feel when you got that darkness crystal and Baron in? Uh, <laughs> pretty good. And then I, I walked over to, I was like, I should do Baron. <laughs> <laughs> and then I was like, no, <laughs> I know where sirens are. I, I know that there's a, I, I couldn't remember if it was white spear altar or ribbon room, but I knew there was the third, uh, third check was on the moon so then i said uh heck i'll just go and and finish it off and luckily hourglasses were there so that made the grind a lot easier because i didn't have to deal with the uh entangles or anything yeah those gold dragons are definitely rude if you actually let them fight yeah so enjoy this music coming up yeah uh, do you have any last thoughts or bad karma? Do you have any last questions? Uh, I don't. Kedril? No. Uh, just uh, thanks everyone for uh, hosting the restream tonight. Thank you for putting on a good show for us. Uh, we were going to give this uh, music a listen to. I can dance to this. I can dance to this. And uh, I believe we are going to get JDP in here shortly for an interview. Uh, he was able to get reconnected.
and we are joined in the booth by JDB. JDB, uh, sorry about the tech issues, man. You doing all right? That's fine. I'm, I've noticed since I got I got a custom computer a while ago, and one of the fans, I guess, has a ball bearing that's not soldered properly. So occasionally when I turn the computer on, it'll just start grinding. It's never done it after the initial startup before. So this is the first for me. I kind of spent the entire lunar subterrain just running around like I had a bomb in my hand ready to go off. Oh, and that, that bomb just happened to go off at the worst possible time. Yeah. Once Kendra won, I was like, all right, I need to reboot my computer like yesterday. <laughs> so apologies for the sudden stop with the uh, delay, the uh, stream delay and all. Oh. GG's Kendra, by the way. Yeah. Perfectly understandable, JDP. And we're sorry it turned out that way for you but you definitely put on a good run along this seed for as long as you were able i mean it's no biggie these things happen what can you do you know like i said before i'm just in it to have fun mostly if i lose i lose if i win i win it's disappointing that you know the loss came from such ridiculous circumstances rather than you know be wiping to Zeromus eight times in a row or something, but <laughs> I mean, what are you gonna do, you know? Well, you have an upcoming match with Xenocat. Uh, Xenocat is two and oh, uh, you are one and one. Do you how do you feel about going into that match and possibly handing him his first loss so that you can all go to the Magma uh round together? I mean, I'll give it my best shot. I, I don't know much about Xenocat, uh, I've seen. Uh, his or her name? I don't know which one. Um, I've seen their name in the uh, Seed of the Week rankings, and the times are pretty close to what I usually pump out, so I imagine it'll be close, hopefully. <laughs> I don't know if I'll win or not, but uh, I figure it'll at least be a good race. Uh, we... even... First fans. Uh, even with a lot, you'll still head to the hook route where you can uh, still get your way into those tables. Oh, you know, I'll give it my best shot. We'll see how it plays out. How'd you feel about the seat overall? Um, I thought overall it was fine. I have a bit of trouble when it comes to, uh, I mean, I don't know if I would call this a jet seed per se, but Seeds where I'm all ready to go, but I don't really have the equipment or to really do a grind and just go forward. So once all the pieces were in place and we were sort of just in the let's grind out and finish it out part, I was sort of out of my element a little bit. I'm more comfortable when everything's sticking to the plan. So. Yeah, the wide open seeds with a magma start and a darkness on the overworld where all your options are in front of you and your go mode is there it's a very different situation yeah it's it's good in some ways but the worst in others When you got the darkness crystal and Baron in, how'd that make you feel? Did you, did you feel like you were behind? Did you feel like maybe you were ahead a little bit? Well, it's funny. When I'm doing races, I usually don't think in terms of I'm behind or I'm ahead. Because I don't really... I know this is going to come off as you know negative or whatever. I don't view myself as you know top star player i think i'm okay so i just go out there with the intention of doing my best so when i get into situations like that i'm more worried about my situation at the time which in this case you know i was like oh crap this is my way to the moon i only have the one thing left on the moon i don't have 10 key items now what uh panic egg grind <laughs> Yeah, I was wondering if that's why you dove into Dwarf, hoping to maybe get a couple more key items to get closer to 10. Yeah, pretty much. I was hoping to get as close to 10 as possible. Um, I also wanted to see 
what the character was because at that point in time i had no healer and that's another thing i don't like situations where i don't have a healer and i mean i know tella can heal but come on let's be honest <laughs> not a heal but you know your attitude towards this isn't a bad thing at all i mean it's not bad at all to not have a big head but even more so there's certain value and you'll hear a lot of talk about people trying to meta a seed and go what is my opponent up to but you can outguess yourself there's absolutely nothing wrong with just focusing on yourself and playing your game and handling it. exactly i mean i've seen a lot of races where you know you'll see the one person put in there i win and everybody starts panicking and making these calls and you know sometimes it works out sometimes you find the route because you're like well where's where's the dumbest possible place i can check that's obviously the right one but other times you find yourself going down a rabbit hole that just makes you worse off than you started with so it's a rando you know you're rolling the dice sometimes it comes up snake eyes sometimes you you win the pots you know yep Well, I I don't have anything else for you, JDP. Do you, Commander? No, after that's about all I've got. Just you know, tough way to lose, but best of luck in your last match, and whether you make it on to Magma or Hook, best of luck to you there. I'll do my best, and again, GG is to Kedril, and I look forward to seeing how the last match plays out. GG's and thanks.